Hello, welcome to another episode of For the Record. Um, so for this video, for this vinyl review, I know everybody's been kind of waiting on this one. I want to do this on Limp Biscuit, three dollar bill, y'all. This is a bootleg copy. This is not an original by any means, but I wanted to show you guys this album and show you pretty much how good it actually came out. And surprisingly, there's like an OB strip on this thing. Um, if you look on it, there is no barcode whatsoever on this fucking thing either, which is kind of annoying. So if you want to put it in your discogs and put it on your collection there, you kind of have to just look it up. So this part just comes right off. And as you can see, it just says, look, this get $3 bill, y'all. Actually came out really, really good. But then again, on the inside here, this is just information about the band itself. And it's got some pictures. Like, that's from their second album. That's, like, after, I think, probably their third or some shit like that. Um, so it's got, like, older pictures and newer pictures and stuff like that. But it's got the original back, the original cover. I do want to buy, uh, you know like an official copy of this they're just like three four hundred dollars which i don't really have i just bought an official copy of an album that i'm going to do a record review on once i get it here it's a pretty special album a lot of you guys are going to like it um if any of you guys out there have not seen this um rolling records had these uh there's a music store it's probably about 45 minutes away from here. Music store that I've been talking about called Music Connection. Actually, in the process of doing a video for that, an episode. So, stay tuned for that. It's going to be fucking awesome. They actually have quite a few copies of these down there, actually. I was kind of surprised. So, this is what the stamper looks. Just says side A. And then, I believe this is what the original stamper on the actual album looks like is like that and of course it's on red vinyl i feel like uh whoever does these pressings just seems to love red vinyl and that's like their go-to because even a lot of the manson bootlegs were on red vinyl and i just feel like yeah it's cool you know what i mean i like it i enjoy it and this is super glossy you can tell uh, when you look at this that this is a little pixelated it's not like perfect but it's not horrible either i've definitely seen way worse but uh, pixelation with like a cover blown up and stuff like that same thing with this um if you look down here it's got some weird like looking dude right there it says interscope flip records mixed by andy wallace you know the same thing that you know produced by ross robinson and biscuit same thing you would see on the cd um, the one thing that really does suck on here is on the spine where it says Limp Biscuit. You can barely even see it even when you're looking at it like this. Uh, I know on camera it's going to come in even worse. Uh, it does say $3 bill yellow on it. And I'll show you the second disc. I was super happy to get this though. This is definitely one of those albums that I've always wanted to get. And there's that. Same stampers on this side too. Um, but it does have the full album on here, which I'm pretty happy about. They didn't try to make it like anything else. Um, and then I know everybody's question on this is sound quality. Like, <clears throat> sorry, excuse me. How does it sound? Um, does it hold up to, you know, what you should expect? And to be honest with you, actually pretty impressed on how good this sounds this actually sounds really amazing i'm not gonna knock it if you can find a copy of one of these they're like you know 50 bucks maybe i think at the most better than paying 400 dollars. and honestly this is i'm i'm happy with this until i can get an original because it's probably going to be about another year till i can find one i was really trying to buy one this year when i got my tax money back but it's just like one of those things that just did happen um and another thing too um i wanted to talk about this album a little bit so three dollar bill yo is the stu first studio album by american rock band limp biscuit was released on july 1st 1997 by flip and interscope records it was established the band's trademark with a single counterfeit which was personally my favorite and if you ever seen the video for counterfeit you know that there's two different versions there's the very first version that came out which was like amazing and then there's some second version which had like 
some weird shit in it, which I, I wasn't, you know, whatever. It's not mine. And there's actually a counterfeit remix video, too. So there's a couple different ways that they did about it. Um, influenced by Hip Hop Heavy Metal and Faith cover of the song uh, by George Michael. Um, and then it says, $3 Bill Yell was produced by Ross Robinson, who was introduced by the band through Korn, bassist, Fieldy. Uh, which, good side note, I am going to go see Korn this coming Saturday. And I'm going to record some stuff there and make another video like I did the Slipknot concert. Um, he listened to their demo and he was like, yeah, okay, I, I, I want to work with them. I'll work with them, you know what I mean? Um, impressed by the band's motivation and sound. And agreed to work with them. I believe three singles off this. There was Counterfeit that came out. And then there was Sour. And then there was Faith. Um, Counterfeit was first. Sour was second. And then Faith was the third one. So this album didn't really blow up until about a year later when they released the Faith music video. That's when everybody was like, oh, what this skip, blah, blah, blah. Listen, I already was listening to them by then. Um, before their this official album came out they was doing a thing for uh mtv you know like spring break type shit when they would always go down to like cancun mexico or wherever the fuck they would go you know for that year they did a performance on mtv and it was really super dope and it was just a great performance i mean it was fucking amazing i sat there and i watched the whole entire set on mtv it was awesome i was like i gotta figure out what band this is and then i remember one day i'm sitting there and i'm watching tv and uh the video for counterfeit comes up and that's what drew me into uh one biscuit right there i was like that's the band that's the band that i saw that day and i was like because you could tell like uh fred durst was very you know he's like one of a kind same thing with like west Borland. he's one of a kind you know what i mean so for them to you know when i saw them on tv i was like that's the band that i saw a lot really really awesome and then, like, of course, the band went on to do, like, uh, I'm just going to show you guys here real quick, uh, you know, Significant Other, which was their other big hit album. Everybody loved this album. Um, for me, uh, like, Limp Biscuit, $3 Bill, Y'all, Limp Biscuit, Significant Other, those are albums that I hold dearly to my heart from my childhood. Uh, some of the best times of my life hanging out with my friends, listening to music and partying and doing all the dumb shit that we did. I ain't ever going to be able to go back and relieve those moments. But I remember listening to those albums at the time, having the time of my life. And honestly, I can't ask for a better, you know, set of bands like Horn, Lip Biscuit, you know. Rage Against the Machine and then they were also on this tour right here this was a tour that I really really wanted to go to which was the Family Values Tour 98 uh, Korn, Rumstein, Ice Cube, Blip Biscuit, Orgy and I believe also Incubus is on this one which is right there um, great performance by them they did fucking awesome Blimp Biscuit's a great band um, if you ever get a chance to actually just get that album I suggest getting it you can look it up on Rolling Records, eBay, you know, they're scalping the price on it. They're trying to make their money, so I wouldn't buy it off them. But if you can go on, like, RollingRecords.com or whatever and find it, or if you can find it at your local music store, any of them can get the import. Um, it's just definitely worth it, and especially for the price and for what an original cost. I feel like if you can't get an original for now, just settle for what you can get until you can get an original, like... I have a bootleg of an album that I just bought an original of. I'm just waiting for it to show up in the mail. And I'm probably going to ditch the bootleg. But before I do, I'm going to make a video and show you the differences between the two. Um, it's very quite clear anyways. But, uh, you know, some people just don't understand it. Because I've seen some people, when I look it up on eBay, and I look through, you know, purchase prices too to see how much things go for. Um, somebody paid almost just as much for a bootleg as I paid for an original copy. So, with that being said, um, when I sell mine, I'm not going to try to get an arm and a leg for it. I just basically want to get almost what I paid for it. I know I'm not going to get exactly what I paid for I probably could get more. I try not to be like that because, like, realistically, help the next person out and do the right thing. You know what I mean? Um... But I have nothing but good things to say about that pressing. It sounds fucking fantastic. I listen to it on both stereo systems. 
it sounded really good in my bedroom on my old school Pioneer and my Panasonic uh, receiver. It's amazing. The album just it thumps, man. It's it's really good. The sound quality is there. Like I really enjoy it. And I'm sure if I got an original, I could tell the difference between the bootleg and the original, which that's how it is with most cases. But for now, I will take what I can get. And uh, oh, it says singles from three dollar bill, y'all. So apparently, nobody loves me was uh, a single also, which was in 1997. Fate. Faith came out in October 31st, 1998, which was over a year after the album was released. Uh, Counterfeit came out August 26, 1997. And Nobody Loves Me came out October 29th, 1997. And Sour was re released March 17th, 1998. I love the music video for Sour. I love all these music videos. Um, they're just amazing. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoy this video. Make sure to like and subscribe. I would actually like you here. If you want, binge watch another video. You can pick one here or here. Hope you guys have a great day. Peace.